chicks are big enough and they can get, they've got the head in the air, right? We knock out that um, nest, that uh, concave. That keeps the conclave cleaner and a lot easier to keep clean, and we, it gets rid of the wood. And Marcel uses a, uses a piece of cardboard. I don't. I had Ostringer make cut, make me the same sort of thing, but I made it out of the same material as an S box. So I've got Trespa inserts. Put that in fresh sawdust. Pop your chicks back, and you've got a nice, then clean S box for, for another week or so. It's, I'm a great believer in, in stopping things going sick. You can have the best chest of antibiotics in the country, right? But it's a lot easier to keep them well than it is to try and cure them if they go sick. So anything that you can do to try and stop the birds and things going up, they're going sick. I mean, I hear a lot about, oh, keep, uh, chicks keep dying at three weeks old. I don't have that problem. I really, well, I mean, I might be lucky lucky because I do have other problems, I can assure you, right? But I don't lose a lot of chicks because me being a bit obsessive as well, I keep the nest boxes clean. I'm a bit of an old fart, really, so. I've been told that quite a few times, by the way. So. And there it is, go back, it's no short dust, but that's how it, it goes back onto the, uh, into the nest box. And you have a nice, clean environment for your stock. And once again, um, if you do need to clean it, it is very, very easy to clean. Just take it to the sink, wash it, wipe it up with a paper towel, and you're back in biz. And I say, if you see this nest box or this hen, okay, this cup of paste in, crushy, almost pulled them apart. But literally, five minutes later, uh, a bit of a soak in the sink, a good wash, and back. And it's not a bad idea to give that a little bit of a spray with F F10 each time as well. Once again, a bit of bed braces and, and uh, belt and braces. Think with F things that with the, there's quite a few things like F10 around now. There is no point spraying F10 onto a dirty surface. All right, it doesn't work. F10 only kills germs on a clean surface, so you have to clean it first and then you use your F10, and then that sterilizes the surface. Or you can use bleach, or you can use gettle, any of those things if you wish to use. But they don't work on a dirty, on a dirty surface. It has to be a clean surface. Once again, the nest box is in the old sink there. And that was my, see my old, no, that was actually my new bird ring by looks of that. We'll see that in a minute. This is at Ronnie's. Okay, this is what I had before. And I say so I bought my Brian bowls and I and they were, they were three foot long. They were a meter long, and um, they worked perfectly well. I put a lot of birds in there. But there's one thing there you can see, which is a, which is definitely me, and it's always been me. Look at all the drinkers are the same. All the feeders are the same. All the pots are the same. And Marcel does exactly the same thing. And we have exactly the same feeders, exactly the same. Well, he, he uses slightly different drinkers to me now, but it, uh, right. So when the birds move from Switzerland to here or vice versa, they, they just carry on because it's what they've got, <coughs> right? And I, I'm a say I'm a, I know I'm an old fart. I don't like red drinkers, yellow drinkers, fifteen. You know, I just don't like that. I like things to be the same. I don't line up the baked bean cans, mind you, but I like things like that to be. Right, these are my, this is my um, bird room as it is now. Um, I ordered it in green and it came as a, in a dark green. I didn't, I wasn't very happy with it, but it's, it's perfectly okay. And you can see it's about 18, 20 inches off the ground. But it's been a fat old kit, I couldn't be getting down on my belly. Right, this is what I did, I completely revamped this bird room. Um, painted it out and I've got a new floor, it doesn't show that there, but there's a new floor. <coughs> and that was what I had before. It worked very well, but it was tired and messy and looks dreadful. And this is what I installed. I 
was at your front. Um, and people said, oh, well, all that stuff in there, you can have more cages in the corner. I, got, I can go to 24 cages, I think. And, I, and the other, I've got another bird room as well now. And I can put six in there as well, so I can have 30 odd. I don't want that. I'm quite happy with 24 cages. I've never been uh, a great shower of birds. I've never tried to, I've always had a good job and I've never needed to make money from birds or anything like that. And quite honestly, she don't want loads of people coming around the house anyway. So uh, 24 cages is, is as much as what I want. So I installed these kitchen units. They haven't worked perfectly because those fronts, I've had trouble with them, uh, the, the face of them peeling off and I need to change the fronts. But no extractor fan, in fact I've changed it again since that one. Uh, I, I maintain the, um, the uh, louver windows and it's, it wasn't completely painted, it's now obviously it was completely painted. So that's what I got. It makes life so much easier if um, you've got decent working surfaces. I mean I've grown to people's bird rooms and I don't know how they manage to be truthful. Because they've got nothing, they've got nowhere to put down anything. You know, I don't, I don't know how they manage, but so, you know, <coughs> this is what I've got. That little cabinet with all the yellow cabinet used to be what kept me bits and pieces. That's gone now as well. <coughs> I say that's why I had that was thirty foot long, and when I first started in the bird, used, birds used to love it. In the end, no one was going out there, only the youngsters, and I say it was getting tired. So I said to my boy. I'm going to knock that down. He said, no, I'll do it for you, Dad. And he literally knocked it down, he and, the, and the shed. He knocked the whole lot down, just kicked it down in less than an hour. Carted it out to the front of the house. I phoned up a couple of old Eastern European guys. They turned up 70 quid later, the whole, the whole thing gone. So it was all gone, down, gone in a day. That's a good thing, having a big strong six foot two, bloody 25 year old at the time. You know what I mean? I couldn't have done it myself. I'd have been still at it now. So what I did, I went and bought myself a workshop. It wasn't that dear, I think it was about less than five grand. It's 20 foot long by 10 foot wide. And uh, I got my godson to put the patio on it for me so it makes it look a little bit nice. Um, and, it's, and as I said to you before, my life has changed. Now my son is as a partner and he's a dad now. Um, I don't shut the bird room up at night time. And I, on, on very warm days, it re they really need to be open. So this is, this is, this is the, my alternative, all right? Because I can go away at night time and leave it open like that. And I've never had any trouble at all. But those, the doors at the front are, <coughs> they're a sliding door. Um, the only thing I said, I think I made, I, I, there's no extract, there's a stra an extractor fan on the other end, but there's none on this end. And I think I need to put an extractor fan, I'll probably have to put it in one of those windows, I think. Um, I might have to alter one of those, the top one of those doors to try and get an, extra <coughs> an extractor fan, and I'll have to have it on a, a, a long flex or unplug it when the doors are open, when the doors are opened. Um, but it worked very well. Now, the shed is higher than normal, because I bought a, I bought a, dou a double decker flight off Ostringer. And I, though the bird room is green, the, the double decker flight from Ostringer was, was lilac. So I bought a lilac bird room and then changed my mind because I thought, well, I'm never going to be out clean that bottom. So I'd be struggling to clean that bottom row of the double decker flight. So I, I'd have to sell it to someone I think can do it. So I sold it to the other very uh, um, you know, athletic bloke. I sold it to Fred Wright. <laughs> <laughs> well he pays the bloke to come in and clean it for him so you know so um, so I, I, I had to think of something else and you'll see what I did but anyway that's what it looks like I think it's fairly attractive it's quite nice and that's the interior it's all colour coordinated that, those are stock cages but at the moment I've got a pair of canaries in it and a pair of um, uh, silver bills for my granddaughter uh, my grandson, he's only, he's only just, uh, what, he's 14, 15 months old. He absolutely loves the birds. I can't keep him out of there. Uh, Nicholas thinks, my son thinks that uh, he's going to be my mate in, it, in years to come and I'll be the old boy walking him around the bird shows. But it's all colour coordinated. Lots of storage. 
And I bought this, two and a half meters long, meter high, 0.6 deep. Never buy anything more than 0.6 deep if it's on a back like that. Because even with that, you have to, I have to almost climb in it to clean the back of it. Anything more than that, unless you've got arms like bloody twizzle, you uh, you can't get it keep it clean. So you, I do put the babies in there, but most of the time it's birds that are that are struggling in the flights. Uh, they are. It is a very very nice setter. I can't remember what it cost, but it was a lot of bloody money. But still, doesn't matter. And, and all that and storage underneath, uh, which I was obviously very short of. So the world room is in two halves. The flight is ten by ten, and the cake this the no the, the holding area of this end is also ten by ten. Um, almost no wood anywhere except I mean the per the, all the perch wood perches I still like wood perches. Uh, the, even the frames that the perches are sitting on are all aluminium. There's a place called the Aluminium Warehouse up in the Midlands. They do aluminium so cheap, it's ridiculous. And what I did, uh, Ostringer was, was late delivering the units and, and, and the, 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 uh, the, the front panels there. So I bought all this two by two angle iron, aluminium angle iron, and I literally screwed it to the walls and to the ceiling, and I, I had it professionally tiled. I grouted it and everything else like that, but I had it professionally tiled. And then, and then there's a gap along the, around the ceiling. So I bought, once again, I bought inch by inch uh, aluminium and screwed it to the ceiling so that I got, there's no gap where the tiles hit the ceiling. Um, and all I did, when they, when they came, I just literally put it against this two by two, um, you know, right angle, 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 drilled through it, bolted it up. But by that time, I was almost ready to go. And what I, what I have got, I've got, um, as you can see, I've got a, a sawdust around the outside. It's sand there, but I've actually changed the sawdust. And I've got a feeding area in the centre. Uh, everything I use, all my dishes, everything is stainless steel. And I have an absolute hard and fast policy. I never put clean food, seed, anything into a dirty dish. Right, I have loads of spares. I bought all those dishes for almost nothing at the club show. And they're big stainless steel dishes like that. They cost me almost nothing at the club show. Because I bought the whole lot of the fellows out there. The old boys in the far right hand corner. Um, I got them very cheap. Talking about, um, uh, you know, what makes sure that, that the birds are fed when, you know, when you're away or, you know, you're not there for a day. That funny little you just see that aluminium profile just the back of that door. I made that myself, and um, all it is very basically is a stand. See these? See on the right hand side on the on the, the half light, I've got these um, blue, basically like hamster drinkers. Though they're made for birds, but they're like hamster drinkers, ball bearing drinkers, and I find them to be absolutely perfect in stock cages and in the flights themselves. Because I can, I can, I can put there's two there. No more, most of it on a weekend run away. I put three there, and I know that I can absolutely guarantee 100% that my birds will have clean, fresh water the whole weekend. Right? I hate open dishes, water dishes, because as soon as you put it in there, lovely clean dish, lovely clean water, a bird will fly across it, and it will dump into that drink that water. And if that, bird's not, if that bird is carrying some sort of illness or problems like that, right, the birds are not drinking that for the whole weekend. So I went to see a guy down at Southampton. He invited me down to have a look at his birds, and he was quite a reasonable setup. And he had, you know, a round um, pot on the floor, nice clean pot, lovely clean water. But he had another pot there, and the water in it, it was absolutely disgusting. Oh. I said, what is that? Oh, he said, that's not for drinking. He said, that's just for bathing. Oh, I said, yeah, I can see that. I can see the note on it. Please don't drink uh, bathing only. <laughs> right? Because budgies don't know about these things. They just drink what's ever in front of them. Right? And people say, oh, you know, I like to keep my birds really naturally. 
That's just, you're talking nonsense. We keep battery budgies, right? In a given space, we always got too many birds, right? So we keep them like bloody battery chickens. So you must, must look after them on the basis as they back, like, that you've got too many in a given space. You're not looking after, you don't run them naturally. You run them artificially. And you, and you make sure that environment, that artificial environment that you keep them in, right, is the best that you can possibly come up with. You don't have to spend thousands of pounds on an offspring of bird room. You don't have to be out there every day scrubbing and bloody cleaning and, and all you can smell is bleach. You don't have to do that. You just have to have a reasonable setup that you're prepared to keep clean. It doesn't have to be absolutely spotless, but it needs to be reasonably clean. And all and at different times, at different times, uh, because you're busy or you're busy at work or you've got the kids to deal with, okay, the place can get a, bit, a little bit grumpy. But because the base of the place is the basic of the place is good, it doesn't matter. And like having all tiles there, I mean, they come from they come from the tile warehouse, and they they were about I don't know five four fifty a meter. They were as cheap as chips. Okay, I'm lazy, and I want and I I like things to be absolutely square and straight. So I paid for them to be to be um, be put on the wall. But, but most other people just do it themselves. Right, so but you've got a nice surface that you can keep clean. I'm looking at my place tonight. But they're a bit grubby. They need a bloody good wash. So I need to get in there and give them a wash. Give them a, get the old pump sprayer thing. Give them a bit of a bit of water. Give it five minutes to soak. And in there with the um, the, uh, the stuff from David Vendepe David Vendepea, you know, Avery scrub comes straight off the tiles. So quickly, so easy. So there's no excuse really. Um, I've got um, ordinary tubes in there. Well, I've got daylight tubes in there now. It's very, very bright. But I'm thinking about going over to um, what do you call it? LEDs. LEDs. Yeah. And um, I've got two five foot tubes there. LEDs are so bright you get away with one five foot tube, and they're so much cheaper to run. You know, you know, I don't have to worry about the money much. But even so, it's still you know for the for the environment. You need to try and keep your, your um, the amount of electricity you're using to a minimum. And also, you know, if you are a family man with kids and things like that, um, you know, these sort of things can be, be a lot of money because those lights are on for a long time. I mean, a lot of people turn their, turn their lights off during the day and rely on natural light. But in that shed there, that, that back end there, because my garden's just full of trees, it's like night time. So I need that light. And, yeah. Uh, so, I think that going over to that. Okay. Mark, you've seen Marcel's. You want a break for a little while? Uh, well, I'm just going to put the kettle on. I'll give it another five minutes. Okay, and another yeah. break. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll hold this Marcel's new bird room until the second half, because otherwise we're going to run out of things to talk about. Any questions or any comments about what I've, I've, I've showed you? Those, those nest boxes, they didn't seem to have a perch near the hole. I don't worry about it. Oh. If they, For what reason? Well, if they're fit enough to, to breed, they're fit enough to fly. And they get in and out, and they got the wire and straight into it. Um, what about the youngsters getting out? Well, they do sometimes get out. Yeah. I mean, some people look... I mean, if I, if I had changed them now, I'd probably make them a little bit deeper. But then you've got the trouble of them, them you'd have to put something in there. So the ends get out, because they can't climb up the, the plastic, but they can climb up the wood. So... Most things in life are a compromise. They're not, they're not a perfect nest box, but they're not far off it, because you can control the environment. And I think that is so important, that if you, you need to be able to control the environment where your birds live. So that one, you know what air nest boxes are? There's nothing you saw that way up here. They just don't be in an air. <coughs> <coughs> the chicks chick, chick stop there a bit long, that doesn't do much. I can't remember. Uh, oh yeah, we, uh, any of you guys up to the spring event? No. Yeah. Did you go? Yeah. yeah. You obviously saw the Miller, the Miller presentation. Yeah. Um, they've recently put new nest boxes, and they they got really quite deep nest yeah. boxes. Really quite deep, but they've got a little ladder in the middle of it, haven't they? Look. Yeah. So they. Derek, years ago, these were about foot deep. Yeah. 
Well, Ray Steele was the first one to start using those really deep nest boxes. Yeah, that's when I started. We started. Yeah. Talking to him, he said, "What's the idea of it?" He said, "Well, if you pick a chicken better one of them, you'll feel the hitting in the chicken." 